Jane Harrington here, independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up. For my workshop video today, I'm going to be talking to you about Stampin' Up's color line. There are a lot of different coloring tools we have. What I'm showing you right now are three of the portraits that I've done. I'm a portrait artist on the side, and I love to use the Stampin' Write markers. And all three of these particular portraits were done using the Stampin' Write markers. Um, I love the brush side and the ability to use the fine side to get detail. You can see in Ellen's eyes, I got a lot of good detail in there. So these are some examples of the ways that artists can use Stampin' Up's color tools, specifically the Stampin' Write markers. So let me show you next. We have at Stampin' Up four color families. This one I'm going to feature right here is the Brights collection. And you see how they have redesigned our ink pads. They are perfect for stacking, so they take up a lot less space. Um, you can easily carry them with you to scraps, uh, to your scrapbook clubs and so on. Um, I'm going to show you real quick. So here's the pad. They are about 30% larger than the standard ink pads you're going to get at the store. And what I love is you see the foam. This is not fabric. This is made of foam, and it gives you a beautiful image. I will never stamp with fabric stamp ink pads again because I just absolutely love this new foam pad. So let me show you a few ways that you can actually color using an ink pad. I bet you didn't know that you could color using an ink pad, did you? One thing you can do is we're going to open it up. I pressed a little bit, if you noticed, before I opened it. I pressed here and that's going to press the plastic against the ink pad and see it put some of the ink right there. So one way that I can color using this ink pad, I'm going to take one of Stampin' Up's blender pens. Now when I use my Stampin' Write markers, I use a blender pen, uh, the Stampin' Up blender pens, to blend the colors together. You can also use these blenders, as you can see, with the ink and the ink pads. So you see how I'm kind of using it like a paintbrush. And you can color in your images using these blenders. You see? Honestly, I have tried just about every single blender that they sell in the craft and art supply store. And I will tell you that Stampin' Ups are far and away superior. They come three in a pack. Um, so, and they're double sided, so you're getting six of them for $12, which is a very good deal if you compare them to the ones you get in the store. And you see, you can really blend things together, it, it's really nice. Um, the other way that you can actually color using the ink pad is using one of our sponges. So, the sponges are come three in a pack, they're $3.50. This is what they look like, and I usually cut them down like this to give me some more surface area. And I'm gonna come over here and grab a blank one. So another way you can use them is you can either dip over here or you can dip off the side of the of the actual ink pad. And see so I'm just loading a little bit of ink on here. And see how I'm using just a, a dabbing technique to dab the ink on. You see, it can give you some very nice techniques if you're maybe wanting to do an ocean or a forest or a sky, so or even just the edges of your cardstock. So there's a lot of different ways you can use these sponges. You also can use the a dauber. These are Stampin' Daubers. And the same thing, you can you know put a little bit of ink on here from there or directly from the pad itself. And so you can dab this on. This is a great way to get elderly, um, maybe if you have a child at home who doesn't have the best motor skills, this is a great way for them to color just by using dabbing. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to get it directly in the lines. And as an example of that, I'm going to show you. I took this image. This is from the Beautiful Day stamp set, which is on page 134 of the catalog. And I went ahead and I stamped it in tuxedo black with the memento pad. This is our standard black pad. And I cut it out with some scissors. And so I'll show you how you can easily 
dab some color on here. You see, it doesn't take long. It's very simple. Anybody can can do this. And this is going to give you a really pretty um, way to color your images in. So the daubers and the sponges are really great tools. And I'm also going to show you... This is, these are our markers. Remember I told you about the Stampin' Write markers that I used to color those portraits with? This is the Many Marvelous Markers. This is the whole set. And they come in all of Stampin' Up's exclusive color lines. And so they're going to match. These are going to match your stamp pads exactly. So let me see. I'm just going to grab this one right here. This is, ah, oh, it's Bermuda Bay, which happens to be the same. And so the ink is going to match... The cardstock, it's going to match the, the marker. Everything's going to line up exactly. So our Stampin' Write markers, this is the marker that I love to use in my artwork. It comes with a brush side. So you can see maybe I want to add a little bit of uh, detailing along here. Like so. See? So there's our brush side. It also comes on the other side as a fine side. And this is going to give you some fine details. Oh, I'm going to put some veins in the leaf right there, like so. Okay, and you can also, you know, use it to write your name and so on. Okay, so I love our markers. They're wonderful. I would recommend them highly, and if you're going to get any of our markers, you definitely want to get these blender pens to go with them. And the blender pens you can use not just with the markers or with the ink pads, you can use them with watercolors and a lot of other things too. So let me set these items aside to show you something else. So here we have our white stays on pad. Now this is an older one, the new ones look a little bit different, but it's white craft ink and the nice thing about white craft ink is you can stamp white onto darker papers. So you could use this to stamp even on black paper. So I love the white pad. Now our stays on pads are wonderful because they're permanent. So you can use these on um, glass, metal, wood, and so on. So you might want to check into a stays on pad. Now, I'm going to show you next this wonderful invention called Brusho Crystal Color. Now with Stampin' Up, Stampin' Up's Brusho Crystal Color comes in five colors. And they look like this. Now the reason that I have um, push pins in them is because um, this stuff is very concentrated. And if you open it up right here, you can open the whole lid, but it's very fine powder and if you, you risk spilling it. You don't want to spill it. And you don't need much. A little goes a long way. It comes in moss green, yellow, brilliant red, gamboge, which is kind of an orangey yellow, and Prussian blue. So I'm going to show you real quick just how to use this. Um, one thing you want to do, because it is a kind of watercolor, and you're going to be using water with it. You want to protect your surface. So I'm going to use um, a paper towel to protect my surface with it. Now, this here is our largest acrylic block. I'm going to use this as a, uh, a palette because our acrylic blocks actually can be used as palettes. You can even use our reinkers on these as well. So let me see. I'm going to use a little bit of red. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to take one of these out. I'm going to tap a little bit on so you don't need very much. You see that? It's just a tiny, tiny bit. It's a very, very fine powder. Now I'm going to grab one of our aqua painters and add some water to it. And you see how it becomes literally a watercolor. And so let me come back over here. God bless me. Okay, so after my sneeze, I'm going to paint on this just like it's a real watercolor. And the more water that you add, the more it's going to run. So I can go lighter by adding less water. And I'm sorry, darker by adding less water and lighter by adding more water. 
So see, so you can color this in just like real watercolor. And another way you can use these is I'm going to put some water over here. I'm just going to water this up a bit, add some water. I still have a little bit of the red, but I'm just giving this a wash with water. And say I'm going to add a little bit of yellow on this side. So I can actually sprinkle right onto here. And I guess I didn't put enough water on there. That's okay. So I'm going to add a little. And Oh, there comes my yellow. It's starting to come out. So you can add it directly to it. And see, there's the yellow. And another way you can use it is by using our stamp and Spritzer. Our Stampin' Spritzers come two in a pack for $3, and you can fill it with water or alcohol. And just for some, a bit of a, a different color over here, I'm going to do this side. I'm going to tap on a little bit of blue. This is the Prussian blue. Now watch how I'm going to do it. I'm going to spray. See how you can spray it? And it gives you a splotchy effect. So this is really fun. You can also just... Um, you know, blend it together if you want, like so. But I really like the splotchy effect that it can get. You see? So there are a lot of different things that you can do with the brush out. And I just, I've only scratched the surface. I haven't even shown you all these different things. But if you're interested in the brush show, um, I'm going to be doing some more videos on that. So one other thing I can show you too, this is the Wink of Stella brush. Now, I love this. Oops, i got to open it. There it is. It looks like a marker, and it is. You see how the tip is glittery? There's glitter in this. And you can use this as a blender, but what it does is it adds a layer of glitter, a very fine layer of sparkle and glitter. So can you see on the... the yeah, there it is. On the pink part where I glittered that. So it acts like a fine marker, like a brush marker, but you can add glitter to your projects very easily. And I tell you what, I was skeptical when I ordered this, but I use this on everything. If you have children, teens, little girls, they're going to absolutely love this Wink of Stella brush. I will put all of the uh, supply list in the, uh, in the links for the video so that you can easily find all of these products. So, another thing I can show you... I'm going to move this flower so I don't bring in the butterfly. I did another butterfly as well. So, I'm going to show you our watercolor pencils. And again, there are several ways you can use these. You can look up how to use these, you know, watercolor pencils and so on. There are YouTube videos with tutorials on it. So here's our real red. So you can use it like a colored pencil. See how you can color it in? And you can either use the aqua painter or you can use again one of our uh, blender pens these blender pens are just so versatile I'm going to use a blender pen and you see how this is blending it together it's making it like watercolor you see so I'm gonna maybe use some of this in here and you can go right on top of the of the wet too and so I'm going to blend them together like so Oops. So I'm going to use some more blue Whoops, on this one. So these are our watercolor pencils. They're also on page 202. You see how easy this is to color in your images? So this one I was using the blender pen. Uh, you can also use... Um, the aqua painter or you can use a, a regular um, uh, whoops you can use a regular paintbrush with water on it as well there's another way that you can color so I'm going to show you this here is this goes in the middle here this comes in a pack of two and let's see there it is these are our sponge brayers they come in a pack of two and you get two additional. And I'm going to grab a scratch piece of paper right here. Now let me grab 
I'm going to grab Pacific Point, our ink pad. Now what you do to use the brayer is you hold the ink pad steady and you hold the brayer in this hand and you're going to roll the brayer. This is going to load the ink onto the sponge, just like so. And when you're ready, you can take your piece of paper and you start bringing it on. So you start off the side and you can go darker on the side and move your way in and go lighter as you go. See, that's what I'm doing. I'm going dark to light. Isn't that beautiful? So the brayer is very versatile. Now, coming from the other side, I'm going to use the Coastal Cabana. So I'm just going to get this blue off. Actually, I'm going to trade out. Now, some of my sponges are a little stained, and that's okay. It doesn't hurt anything. You can just wash these right off in the water. Oops, got off the side. You can wash them right off in the sink. And there we go. So from this end, I'm going to go just like so. And I'm going to start moving toward that blue. You see how it gives a gradient? Whoops, I keep bumping the camera. Sorry about that. There we go. You see that beautiful gradient we're getting? And then maybe at the very end, I'm going to try using the gorgeous grape. So, I'm going to take another sponge. I'm going to take this one off, move it aside, and you just run these underwater to clean them and so you can trade out colors. So I'm going to load some of the grape, gorgeous grape on here. And let's start from this side. So I go off the page, start dark, move my way in, and overlap a little bit into the next color. You can really make some gorgeous card backgrounds, scrapbooking backgrounds, and so on using this technique. And if you want to add a little more, you can load some more on there, and go a little darker at the end, and so on. There we go. So there is a beautiful strip that we can use on a card as a background. You might want to stamp a sentiment on here or so on. Um, all right, so those are some of the coloring tools that we have. There are so many different ways you can use Stampin' Up's coloring tools. And I, I've, I've just barely even scratched the surface. I haven't even shown you everything. So if you want to learn some more techniques, then you can always check back. I'm going to be doing more technique videos on how to use all of these coloring tools. But this just kind of gives you a bit of an overview of our what our coloring tool line is. One other thing I guess I should add that I didn't think of a minute ago. When I told you about the Stampin' Spritzers, again, these come in a pack of two for $3. And you can fill them with water or alcohol. Another thing you can do is I have not even talked about Stampin' Up's reinkers. Now the reinkers, when your stamp pads start to get low, you can use the ink to reink your pad. It remoistens it with the exact same color. And they're only three dollars and seventy-five cents. So what another thing you can do with them, other than reinking your ink pad, is to fill a Stampin' Spritzer with a few drops of one, and then you add some alcohol. And when you spritz, let's see. Does it show up? There we go. You see how it's making a spritz? There we go. See? So that's another thing that you can do with these spritzers. They're very versatile. If you have any questions about any of the products that I've shown you, whoops, and see I spritzed on my pad there, <laughs> um, you can email me at tumbleweedcrossing at gmail.com. You can ask me in the comments of the video, or you can follow me on Facebook um, I also do have a Stampin' Up! website, so if you search for my name, H. Jane Harrington in Pinson, Alabama, you will find me. And I'm going to complete, uh, using some of these techniques, I will complete a ser series of cards to show you some of the ways that I've used these coloring techniques. So check my website, check my Facebook page. You can also follow me at... Uh, Calamities Stampede on Instagram. That's Calamities Stampede. 
again, I'll, whoops, I'll include a link to that as well. So any questions, give me a buzz. Uh, if you would like to order from my workshop, visit stampinup.com. And make sure to use the host code that I provide you in the links so that I will get credit for your order. So check back and I will have more videos up soon and I will see you the next one.